Good evening. Went to Harbor Freight today and bought the new Admiral Advantage 12 inch dual bevel sliding compound miter saw. It says 50 to 99 pounds. It is quite a challenge to do this by yourself. And the first thing I would recommend that Harbor Freight does to improve this saw is to put some hand holds on the side. It's a big, big box, hard to handle, especially without hand holds. So let's open it up. Okay, how much does this saw cost? Right now, it's uh, $199. And for a couple of days earlier this week, you could get 15% off on all Admiral items. Unfortunately, I didn't make it there during that time period. So I paid $199 for this. So opening it up. 60 tooth, 12 inch diameter, 60 tooth blade. And this is just a huge box, but it comes as one piece, so it has to be this way. If I remember when I bought the Chicago Electric brand of the same, basically the same saw, the box was huge like this also. So, got some. Accessories that look strangely familiar like the Chicago Electric. And there it is. It's a pretty big saw, but it's roughly the size of the Chicago Electric. Uh, a lot of stuff for shipping here. So it had a styrofoam chipper and one zip tie holding this down. This is the up down release. Pull it and rotate. It holds it down. Pull it out. And it lets it come up, but you have to rotate it or it will catch it the next time down. Surprised how dirty it is. It's like marred. The finish on these is marred. It's strange. It's like they machined it funny. The big improvements on this saw is you pull this up and you set the bevel and you lock it. Boy, if you don't watch what you're doing, you can catch your finger on the end of that. Hmm, that could just be me. So this rotates like before. This is a lot better. Uh, this is marked a lot better for the miters. It has the same stops, uh, 31.6, 22.5, 15, 0, 15, 22.5, 31.6 and 45. So on this side, it'll go a little past 45. It marks it to about 48, but after that, you're kind of guessing. I'm thinking it's probably going to go to 50, roughly. Next to tie, hold down. Give you more options. That's actually much better. Obviously, you can't use that with anything but small pieces. If you have a large piece, you have to put it back here. But that is more versatility. The more versatile something is, the more useful it is. It has four holes for tie down to the bench. That's nice. These are just huge. You do a thumb wheel, and you pull that back and forth. And they're tall. Four and a half inches is what I think I saw. The the dust collection is up here like on the old one. Same size. On Chicago Electric you had to reach back here to tighten the lock on the double bevel. But now that it's up here, much easier. There is an adjustment here to adjust the angle to be sure zero is zero. 
this is a lot like the Chicago Electric. You can adjust where down goes so you can be less and this one pull it out of the way and it becomes a stop and won't let it go down. You push it in and it lets it go down. So you let it go down. Stop it from going down and then you can turn you can turn the bolt down to make it stick up further and then it has a lock. And the back one has the same thing so that when once you decide you want to set it to go a certain distance down, you can lock that in place. So we've got the power cord. It's about a it's about a five foot power cord, maybe four foot power cord. I got a problem with that because it's about a five foot power cord. You gotta be careful with this because five foot, if you're putting that anywhere that's not right at the saw, when you rotate, it's gonna lock the cord. Up here on this side, it's fine. And one thing they did different here is they redesigned this end. This used to mount on top and it was always snagging, at least for me. Um, so they put it on the side, maybe that works better now. I would say that these linear bearings need greased, or maybe that's just how long they are. It has a lot of the same features as the Chicago Electric brand. The big differences are this, it's taller, the front lock, the ability to put the hold down on the front. Those are all new features. Still have the left and right push. Okay. They give you a dust bag. Pretty simple to operate. So squeeze these two edges, open it up. Yeah, this is going to go in a lot easier if you put the motor down and lock the slide. There you go. And I can tell you from experience with the other one, it will catch. I want to keep that springy thing up. Um, experience with the Chicago Electric one, this will fill up with dust, but it will also go everywhere else also. So, pull this up. As you can see, as that gets full, it's going to interfere with the flow. Uh, I turned the straight piece down. That'll keep it from getting in the way. But as it gets full, it's still going to drop down. That's just going to get in the way. There's no real substitute for attaching uh, a strap back to this outlet. If you set it up just perfect, it'll catch 90% of the dust. This has knobs. Tighten this down, loosen them. It has two bolts here. And if you loosen those, you can adjust this back and forth and if those are not where they need to be, 90 degrees up and down, if they're not flat across the whole front, if they're not 90 degrees to this, then you can adjust them using this. This is the stop for the bevel. Right now it's set up to tilt this way. By default, it stops at zero goes to 45 and back to zero and you can adjust to zero with this screw right here. If you want it to go this way down, you pull this back, unlock it. I've unlocked it and now it'll go the other way. Problem is you can't go back to zero automatically without that piece right there coming this way. So I would say that's a little awkward to come the other way, but it still works. Once you understand how to use it. Like most Harbor Freight tools, they give you an extra set of bushings. 
Now, I've had my Chicago Electric for five years and used it a lot. These, I took them out the other day. They're almost new. So I think you'd have to use this day after day to wear these out. But they give you an extra set. The problem is finding a place to put these where they'll still be available when you need them. Okay, they did something different with these sides. You loosen this nut and you pull them out and they act as extensions and they are supposed to be flat with the table. This is a stop. So if you wanted to cut something a certain length, you would set it. You could set that board there and cut reproducible cuts. So let's grab the square and see if they are level with the table. Well, level with the table is probably a relative thing. It's level, this is level with this, is level with this. This in middle piece is not level with the rest of it and there is no way to adjust that. So if I put that square across the back, you can see there's space through here. This seems to slope just a little bit in. These are below the surface. So I would say that this table is not perfectly level with this. There is a little bit of light right here and just a little bit across here and then it's okay over here. So that's kind of weird. If you were going for a perfect cut, I don't think you would get it on this unless you did a span across those two. Now granted, it's only out a tiny fraction, but it's still out. And if I come over to here, that is a big gap right there. So I don't think that this is flat all the way across. Let me go check my Chicago Electric. Well, it's no better or worse than the Chicago Electric. Sorry, going this way. This one seems to be okay. The Chicago Electric ends, you have to custom adjust, which is good and bad. You can adjust them so that they're even, but they're less likely to stay in place over time. I do like the little stop. You can use that as a depth. But just like the Chicago Electric, these knobs, when you tighten them, don't stop. They don't hold. Now, in the manual, it says nothing about using this right here. But obviously, that's what that's intended for. But it still has the hold on the back. Got this little flat piece. So that you can put this on and that'll keep that from spinning. It will work on this side, but to me it's always been a little awkward to get it to work. I never really like to use it on this side. To me it's a little more awkward and you lose some range because this gets hit by the blade. I think it gets hit more on this side. That might just be my impression. So this fence also has the two bolts that can be adjusted. This can be signed. See on this one I can get right up close to this before I have a problem. So to me I can get a lot closer in on this side than I can on this side. And actually if you use this stop there's no way that that can reach over far enough to get in the way of this. Let's check the other side. So if I use it on this side and I put it as far over as I can, it doesn't get in the way at all. Of course the flip side of that is if it doesn't get in the way, that also means I can't get over as far. Another thing I've noticed using the Chicago Electric, let me see if I can turn that. Using the Chicago Electric in service I've noticed that this is a very wide zero clearance it's not zero clearance and i actually use a piece of plywood over that a lot of the times to get zero clearance but i actually thought about taking just packing tape and putting over there it would be a one or two time use thing 
But the problem I have is thin pieces fall down in there. And if you look at that, it's designed to hold those pieces in there. So that will fill up and that is difficult to clean out. I have to take off this throat to get in there to get all the wood out. So to me, I would rather have it fall all the way through. Well, if you tie it down to the table, falling all the way through would be just as bad. You'd have to take the saw off the table to get to it. But taking this throat off over and over again is probably not good for the throat. So I really like this better. But they have detents for most of these. The most commonly used things. 15, 22 and a half, 31, 6, and 45. Just like the Chicago Electric has. It has all these detents. And with the Chicago Electric, they're fairly accurate. Now, as you can see from using this, it becomes very top heavy and absolutely needs tied down. Let's plug it in. Now, I've got this on top of my table saw and I have the plug in right on the side of my table saw on this side. And when I plug that in, I've barely got enough room to use it. You can see this cord takes it to the ex really extreme. So you're almost going to have to have some type of power strip here to give it all the range of motion. And if I try to go all the way over, it actually pulled out the plug. So in my opinion, you have to have a power strip back in the back. So here's the saw you get with it. One inch arbor. 5,000 RPM max, I think this saw runs at 3,800. 12 inch, 60 tooth. And let's see if we can get that off of there. Okay, to change the blade, take out this back screw from the plate guard. For God's sakes, don't lose that. Now pop this out and lift it up out of the way and it will stay like that. This is a reverse threaded bolt, so loosen it, continue tightening it to loosen it. Pull off the arbor flange. It's a big arbor flange. The bigger the arbor flange is, the more steady or true the blade will run. Of course you want this blade cutting down. So you want the label out. Use your three hands to get this on the arbor. Put this arbor plate on, and it is keyed, it only goes one way. Now put this on and pretend like you're loosening it. Now they give you the wrench to tighten it with, and you gotta pretend like you're trying to loosen it. It's got a spindle lock. It'll turn until the spindle lock engages. There we go. And tighten this thing down. Burn pressure, but don't over tighten. Okay, now put this. Once you got that tight, you can let this come back down. Put this down. Put this bolt back in. Now that needs to be tight. So now we've got everything working. Not that difficult. So let's plug it in. Now obviously I don't have anything keyed on the handle, but when I turn that in I can hear something. I can hear like an electrical feedback or a motor that's starting to run or something. That's kind of weird. Two little switches on top of the handle. The one on the right is the LED work light. The one on the left is the laser, so I'll turn that off and back on. You should see it come right down through here. Okay, so in a previous video, I measured this ruler and it, I'm convinced it's 90 degrees. So I'm gonna mark this, put the back edge against 
back edge. And I'm going to cut. I'm going to line it up with the laser. So two things. First off, I'm about an eighth of an inch off there. So if I measure this, and that's not 90 degrees, but again to be sure. So I'm going to set this to 90 degrees. I'm going to mark that. Line the laser up with the mark and cut. So once again, I can see that the laser isn't lined up right. So it's not lined up right. I can see daylight about a fourth of the way down that. That is not cutting square. To fix that, you gotta loosen these and adjust this back and forth. To adjust that, you use Allen keys and they don't give you any. Okay, so laser, worthless. The light, I really, the light can be annoying if you're trying to use the laser, but if you're not trying to use the laser, hey, the light works pretty damn good. Lights up your work, but I have a lot of light in my shop. Obviously, I use my Chicago Electric without the light, but it would be handy to have. This is a problem I saw with the Chicago Electric, and they didn't change it in this saw, is if I put a long piece across here, the edge lines up even, the back edge lines up even, but right here, there's maybe an eighth of an inch. So if I'm cutting a short piece, I'm not convinced I'm ever getting 90 degrees. But say I took this, so there is, the square is flat against the blade. It touches here, but it doesn't touch here. I pull up the blade and it goes back. So theoretically, I've got to loosen this and move it back and flex both of those back until I get a pure 90 degrees across the area. Manual doesn't tell you what size you need for that. I found one that fits, but it doesn't have a size written on it. do is try to walk this all the way down I'm set this against the blade at 90 degrees and I want to adjust this well this ain't gonna be as bad as I thought it was going to be got to be sure that the square isn't touching any of the teeth because that'll throw off your measurement so that looks good Apparently when they assemble it, they just don't give a crap. So let's try this other side. Remember it's unplugged because it came unplugged. Okay, so I want to 90 degree the blade. Okay, so what I did was make that 90 degrees, and that seemed to work out okay. And that's not 90 degrees. Ah, oh, it's on a tooth. I honestly don't know if I torqued it a little tightening it or I just didn't do it right to begin with. How much flexes are in the blade? There's a good bit of flex in the blade.
The problem, the way this is designed, is this goes over, and then there's a round piece, and then the other side. And it's kind of spring-loaded by that circle in the back. So when I adjust it, it doesn't hold in place. That spring kind of takes care of that. So it makes it a little difficult to line up, especially if you have to pull forward. Okay, that looks good. Well, let's try it again. That looks good. Let's try this side again since I messed up that side. And you gotta get those teeth out of the way. If you have it set against the tooth. No, it's still not right. When it's being spring loaded, I wonder if fixing one side messes up the other. Okay, that side's square. We'll recheck this side. That's square. So let's take it up and lay the square across the whole length. And that looks pretty good. Same side. So. I'm reasonably certain this ruler is 90 degrees. Well, we'll try the laser again just for fun. Once again, the laser is messed up still by the same amount, and I don't think I'm going to be able to fix that. Okay, there you go. It's square. Oh. Let's reverse it. I'm thinking that's square. It's a very tricky thing to, to set up and make square because this back acts as a spring. So if I adjust this, it kind of stresses the other one. And if I move it one way, it wants to go back the other way. So that's kind of weird. So what about the back edge? Is it square? Uh, seems to be square. I've got it working. Showed you how to put the blade on, the adjustments here, the back one. You don't want to adjust it to go too low, it'll hit the bottom of the inside of the kerf. This one could help you do something like a rabbit joint, the front screw here, and this lets it pass through or lets it stop. Normal use, you want that all the way up. These are somewhat level. They're out, and the further out you come, the worse they get. They're not level with here as they go out. This is actually nice. I like this big back, but I use it with a board anyway because of the tear out. The laser is out by about an eighth of an inch. That's a problem. 45 degrees was out, but if you remember, we adjusted since then, so we need to try that. Apparently locking this down does have an effect on accuracy. So I'm gonna move this to 45. So there's no way I can use the hole down on that small piece. So let me find another board to use. Okay, so I'm going to try 45 degrees. I'm going to cut it like this because I want to be on this side so I can hold it down with my hand and not have to use that hole down. Okay, 
Okay, this is a piece of plywood. I know that these are square. So, if I put it like this, it shows that it's square. But I'm probably more interested in seeing this. And it shows that it's square. So, in adjusting these backs to correct the 90, we also fixed the 45. So, put this all together, did some testing, did some test cuts, got everything working, and I had some extra parts. I had this, and these, two clips. Now, I went to the manual, and in the assembly, these are not referenced at all. This one was easy to figure out. It mounts in the back, and it's an anti-tip mechanism. So let's put that on. This bar mounts back here. This is the hold down. And this slides in, and then you tighten it down. So it's an anti-tip mechanism. And I did notice that if you don't attach it to the table through these mounts that they give you, that it does tend to tip backwards, but they also tell you to attach it to the table with that. So that might be intended for some type of a different mount. I don't know, but that's what that's for. It's an anti-tip mechanism. Okay, so I got the anti-tip bar in place. I put this all the way back. Now the saw doesn't tip. It's a safety measure, and that's really good. The problem is in the manual and the assembly guide, it doesn't say to put that there. So what about the second set of things that wasn't in the manual? two clips and there's two different screws I thought that was strange why would you use two different screws to mount the same things if you look they're key this stands up just a little higher so they are cord holders and this one goes here and it uses the black machine screw to hold it in place This one serves the same function, but mounts in the back. Mounts right here. So there we go. It is to hold the cord when you're in transit. There you go. All ready to go. There you go, all ready to go. So that is a cord wind up. Now, if you think I'm crazy, so how I found this was I went to the parts list at the end of the manual and I started looking for these attachments. And if you look close enough, you'll find them. It's not obvious where they attach to the saw, but to say it's the right general area. And what's funny is in the pictures on the box, it doesn't show that. So anyway, when you go to assemble it, you know where that goes. So we fixed the accuracy. It cuts 90 degrees, cuts 45 degrees. The detents match the cut. Okay, the laser's off by an eighth of an inch, and I can find no way to fix that. So we've got a dust bag that kind of works. It actually catches about 75% of the dust. You can see that when I was using it, it sprayed everywhere anyway. This model has a new hold down. And that's a pressure fit. On the other one, there's actually, well, it's a pressure fit no matter where you put it. So no matter where you put it, it's a pressure fit. It counts on the lever action of putting it like this and tightening this down, makes it steady. The Chicago Electric actually had a knob back here to tighten it on and it didn't have these front ones. I consider that a big plus. So we have a work light. 
when I use the laser, that kind of gets in the way, but to be honest with you, I won't be using the laser. It almost makes me think it's on there backwards, that if you could reverse it somehow, it'd be on this side of the blade. It's got the front bevel adjustment, which is pretty nice. On the Chicago Electric, you had to reach around here, so that works out really well. So my overall impression, the Chicago Electric you can get for $129 with a coupon. This one costs $199, and 20% off coupons do not work on this. Although you might see it on sale for $20 or $30 off at some point. When I went and bought it, it was brand new and they were offering no discounts at the time I bought it. Like I said earlier, a couple days before I bought it, I could have got 15% off, which would have got it down maybe to $170. The day I bought it, I could have got the Chicago Electric for $129 or this for $199. I went ahead and got this one, but for $70, the laser doesn't work has a higher fence it can be set up to be accurate so the laser not working is the big drawback the front release and the taller uh, fence is the big advantages other than that it's pretty much the Chicago electric in my opinion they took the Chicago electric and said what can we do different they made the knobs red instead of yellow they made this adjustable from the front. They made the fences taller, which is good. They adjust the same way as the Chicago Electric. They're just taller. And that's really the only differences. So for 70 bucks, you get this front adjustment and taller fences. My opinion, why they came out with these, the Admiral brand and the Bauer brand do not have 20% off coupons. So to me, they make more money off of these by not offering the 20% off coupons. And that's why they're switching everything to these lines. So for $199, it's a great saw. Uh, if I was looking at just cost, I would buy the Chicago Electric. If I was looking at this as a convenience, 70 bucks for that. Laser doesn't work. It is accurate. It can be set up to be accurate, just like the Chicago Electric can be set up to be accurate has a work light. So in reviewing the saw, yes, I do recommend it. It has a lot of features, usability. The outriggers need adjusted and they don't adjust. It's a little bit nicer saw than the Chicago Electric. I think that the motor is probably the exact same motor or very, very close because it's got the same ratings. There's nothing wrong enough with this saw to keep you from buying it or for me recommending it. I'm just not sure it's worth $70 more than Chicago Electric. I haven't compared this to their newest higher end saw, but that'll be the next one that I buy. It's just as loud on the linear bearings as the Chicago Electric. Okay, so it's a nice saw. The only major drawback is the laser and the outriggers are not adjustable. Everything else seems to be okay. So if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.